in all likelihood, the strongest version of Legolas is the one they released in the very first series, uh, Legolas Greenleaf, who is strategically strong and matches up with the thematic idea of Legolas so well, just point at a minion and shoot. Uh, the one weakness, perhaps, to Legolas Greenleaf is you use your vitality on getting minions out of the way during the archery phase, and then Legolas can't really risk losing a battle, so he doesn't get involved at all. This deck is based on uh, the fight at Helm's Deep, and so it thematically wants to build into the elves who fought alongside uh, Rohan, and it gives them a chance to fight, and it gives Legolas a reason to uh, want to win each of those battles, besides, of course, beating the other minions. But at this Legolas says, each time Legolas wins a skirmish, you may heal a dwarf companion or another elf companion. So we want Legolas in the battle, and we want him to win, so we're just basing everything around that. The starting fellowship includes Frodo Courteous Halfling, along with uh, the answer to all riddles for the ring. Not too much to say here, except that uh, with the deck being based on Unbound Companions, this is the most helpful Frodo. You're not going to see a lot of deck discarding at this point in the game in Tower's Block, but it's good anyways to be able to prevent it. And then the answer to all riddles is a very nice ring. Give the extra vitality and the chance to become strength plus two during the skirmish phase if need be. Held Deer, if you have him in the starting fellowship, just gives you a reliable base seven to start off with, so you're not going to get um, destroyed by, say, Toldier coming out in the first turn at strength 12 and fierce if you don't happen to have anything in your hand to help. Uh, it's also good every once in a while to have Heldir available to liberate sites if you need them. My loose theory is that the core competency of any fellowship is its ability to kill, discard, get rid of minions in some way or another. Uh, it protects companions, it also allows you to double move. So with the elves, the built-in way to get rid of minions is archery. For that you need elven bows, for elven bows you need, of course, good elven companions. Lorien Swordsmen fit the bill very well because you send the archery and then naturally they reduce the minion strength as they go along. And then you have Aragorn, Defender of Free Peoples. This is, again, one of those versions of a companion that you don't see too often, but we're going to build into the Elven tokens here. This is, of course, a very thematically fitting Helm's Deep Battle version of Aragorn. And he has a very powerful ability. Remove an elven token to make a minion skirmishing Aragorn strength minus three. So, unlike a lot of very good decks where you're splashing Aragorn in and giving him some support, with this specific Aragorn, the more you build into helping your elves, the more you're helping Aragorn himself. Uh, he's an honorary elf. To that end, Aragorn very much benefits from the Last Alliance of Elves and Men. This is going to be a very efficient deck, um, approaching the minimum number of cards possible, so there's a good chance we're going to spot the three elves that we want. We're already very close with the starting fellowship. And then for Aragorn support, we'll give Ranger Sword, just the basic plus two damage plus one. Again, the damage plus one is good for clearing minions. And Aragorn's Bow. We're building into the Elven Archery here, so we want Aragorn to be able to uh, help along with that. There is a slight risk for Grimma Wormtongue uh, sending these cards back into the hand, but it's good to have options. We're going to play a similar game with Legolas, giving him Asphaloth, Bow of the Galadrim, and Long Knives of Legolas. We want Legolas to win skirmishes, so although Asphaloth belongs to Arwen, or Glorfindel really, um, this will give you just a static plus two bonus. We aren't putting underground sites in our adventure path, and you may run into a couple depending on what your opponent is running, but there's a good chance Asphalos stays around, and there are plane sites in two towers, so this could be a plus four for Legolas. Then, of course, we have the Bow of the Galadrim. Give him yet another reason to win so that he can wound a minion when he does. And then this, even though it's just that plus one, I love... Each orc or Yurik high skirmishing leg loss is strength minus two. So that's going to help out a lot. Um, in the towers game, you 
tend to run into a lot of Yurikai. Again, we've got three cards for Legolas, so we maybe want to watch out for the limit, but it's good to have them available. And uh, for further support for the Elves and for Aragorn at the same time, this deck will run four copies of Agility and one copy of Strength of Arms. This one will give you automatic Elven tokens. You play this down for two, and although that is a bit expensive, it gives Aragorn two Elven tokens right away. So this is, in some sense, a plus six buff for Aragorn. You're making the minion strength minus three, really, but it's nice and powerful. There's a lot of bang for your buck with this card. And then Strength of Arms is one that can stay on your board and not go away. So if you're looking for Legolas to win skirmishes, he passes along a token to Aragorn. Aragorn uses it if you can draw into this card. So it can be effective that way. So four Elven Bows, we really need them in the deck. And finally, we round this out with four copies of Valor and four copies of Supporting Fire. That may be a lot of skirmish events, but the message is the elves are going to be able to fight. I spent the the better part of my time playing Lord of the Rings. Um, building elven decks where there's a lot of archery going on and then they have to get into a fight and they just die. It feels good for the elves to be able to fight back. Valor gives you plus three when you're skirmishing a wounded minion. We expect to see a lot of that. And then supporting fire, uh, strength plus three if you spot elf three elf companions. And that is very easy to make happen. Overall, this deck is about efficiency and consistency. We want to find the Elven Bows and the Agility as quick as possible, and it's not really a loss to draw multiple copies. Um, the goal is to get the Elven Bows down, stack up the archery, get Aragorn out there, have him win skirmishes, um, let Legolas fight. And then Agility is a unique card, but you can scrap it during the skirmish phase too once you're out of tokens, uh, use it during an Elven skirmish, get it out of the way. It can then get in its own way a little bit, but we, we certainly want to see it right at the beginning. And since this deck is building into the Helm's Deep theme, Yurik Defenders, Yurik Regulars, a Yurik Vanguard, Two Yurik Assault Bands. Rear Guard. That's not a Rear Guard. Rear Guard. Rager. And then we break the Helm's Deep Mold a little bit. So we have four copies of Yurik Warrior. This is about the fact that he has nine strength with a Twilight cost of only three. The being able to be fierce with six companions is more of an accident. It's just really good stats. For the same reason, we have the Yurik Captain, um, and then we have two Yurik High Rating Parties, Strength 9, Vitality 3, and then a Yurik Slayer. I do like his ability to make use of Twilight if there's any left over. He is a very strong minion. Four copies of Sauron's Ambition. This is just a really basic but effective card because you can put it down into your support area and have it last for a number of turns until you're ready to use it while it costs zero. So it's good for hand cycling and uh, of course for skirmish boosting. Two copies of Ferocity, two copies of Bread for Battle. We really want the Yurikai to win their skirmishes, of course. And then I'm running a copy of Sauron Black Trader and Sauron Staff Wizard's Device. Certainly Keeper of Isengard is a much stronger version of Sauron. Uh, to be honest, I, I just don't own him. But also, if you happen to be observing the rules about the X list, then here is a legal alternative. He uh, gives you the ability still to get a fierce skirmish in because he fetches Sormon staff out of the discard pile and then allows himself to participate in archery fire and skirmishes. And then this makes him fierce and damage plus one. And then it's good to be able to just call him back on site 9 from the discard pile for minus 2, so you can guarantee yourself a minion there. There are a number of cards here that are looking for battlegrounds. Uh, Ferocity, your rearguard, the assault bands, the vanguards, and the defenders all key off of having those battlegrounds on the adventure path. So let's take a look at those. Site 1 is the Rittermark. 
this deck very much wants Aragorn out there, so we want to get him. If we are going second, then the World of Rohan gives us three Twilight on side two, which is very good, and gives us an extra one every time a minion is assigned to a skirmish. Notice also that we have planes here, so if we have Asphaloth out, we can get an extra plus two strength from the planes. Barrows of Edoras, there's not too much to report here, but it is nice to do some hand cycling. White Rocks, here we are with the battleground. We have three Twilight, and the shadow number of this site is plus one for each mounted companion. Deep of Helm, Plains, yay. Battleground, yes. And then of course the Twilight cost of the first Yurik High played at Deep of Helm, each turn is minus three. So if we are going second and our opponent's Fellowship is ahead of us, this gives the shadow side a really good chance to get in there. Hornberg Armory, Again, just a little bit of card drawing power. Hornberg Causeway. To my knowledge, this is the only Site 7 in the Towers block which has a battleground on it, so that's the main reason we want it. The fact that the minion archery total is plus 2 for each unbound companion over 3 does hurt for this deck's fellowship, certainly. But again, if we're playing this site, then our opponent's fellowship is running ahead of us, and this might be just the thing that we need, in addition to the Yurik High's damage bonus. Now I'm wondering if the Dunland uh, version of Site 8 is a battleground. Um, if not, I think this is the best one to go with, just because of the 8 Twilight cost. Uh, our deck is not running any allies, so we don't have to worry about the game text here, but this might help against our opponent. And finally, the Orthanc Balcony, which gives us a chance to bring Sauron out from the discard pile with a Twilight cost of minus 2. And then Sauron has the ability to bring his own staff out of the discard pile and thus be fierce and damage plus one. There are still things that could go wrong here. Even though this deck is 31-31 for a total of 62 cards, you may still end up with some of your deck left. And then maybe Sauron's still in there. This doesn't let you play him from your deck. There's also the chance that the staff is still in the deck too. So this is not foolproof. But we do have a battleground here. Um, I would consider Palantir Chamber, one more Twilight, and then this is a fantastic game text. Remove two burdens to play a minion from your discard pile. The uruk over there have a pretty good Twilight cost um, balance. We, we have a lot of minions who are just three, and then the Uruk regulars can make things even cheaper. So this would be a good way to get minions out there in abundance. Also, a possibility would be the Fortress of Orthanc, which has Battleground on it, whereas Palantir Chamber does not, has nine Twilight, and then the shadow number of Fortress of Orthanc is plus two for each companion over four. This can help with some of the very expensive uruk like the Assault Band and the Vanguard. The difficulty I have with this one is you have to rely only on what you have in your hand, and um, I mean, your hand just might not be that good. Also, we want our Yurikai to um, be fierce as much as possible. We're relying on what we have in hand here. This doesn't guarantee that we'll have a fierce Yurikai in our hand. This at least gives us Sauron for guaranteed fierce. And then the Palantir Chamber, we can draw into whatever Yurikai we want, although Battleground's gonna keep the Vanguard and the rear guard from getting fierce, rather because the Palantir Chamber is not a battleground. So this is, I think, my happy middle ground, but playtesting could uh, show perhaps that this one is the better choice. I don't quite think the Fortress of Orthanc makes the cut, but if you disagree, um, I'd love to hear your reasons. So there's our Elf, Archery, Yurikai, Helm's Deep theme deck. Thank you for watching.